I witnessed, recorded, and produced these videotapes of the Washington, D.C. hearing. Their authenticity is above question. This is a hearing about the government licensing the electrocution of people to cause grand mall seizures. This is produced as part of the ongoing work on the website the way, the truth, and the life.net. Think of the millions of dollars taxpayers' money spent to pay psychiatrists and their supporters and for the worldwide travel in putting this conference together, while the victims and opponents had to pay their own way. Overall, the impression is more affected disorder and Thank you. 
Alex Smith and Richmond and Canada, 67%. We failed about 70%, and that'd be 75, about 64%. And I see Nathan, we went with Nathan, and that's the same thing. Uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan, 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 But one way, one problem there is, you know, maybe more women are admitted. Uh, so, of course, there's more women are admitted in the ACT. Um, well, I try, I, try to, I try to look at this with a slide. The so red is the percent of all admissions to the one of And the these red bar is the percent of all admissions to that particular kind of hospital in the other hospital. Okay. The blue is the percent of ACT patients to the one in each case, women are overrepresented in over the uh, So even if uh, you look at, even if you take into consideration more women are admitted, it's still more women in the ECT than men. 1980, you get a similar picture. Now the discrepancy is less, except in the state hospital. It happens to be more in the state hospital. There may be a pollution effect because the uh, Patients, patient patient license they also change it somewhat. But uh affective disorder disordered women uh definitely uh, tend to get that well one thing to note is they had affective disordered women out a number of men in the general population too uh, reviewed by Boyd Weissman they said that's what like. Um, uh, looking at affective disorder, and the question is, you know, do women get uh, more ACD because they get assignments more than affective disorder? Well, in part, that is really true. The red is, this is again 75, the red is the percent of all admissions to the And again, of all affected disorder and blue is the percent of these two to these women, affected disorder women. The discrepancies, the differences here are nearly as great as ever. It is clear that state counties come here and it's hard to know what it's going to have here. But in most cases, uh, if you look at just affected disorder, that does tend to be more modified when you go on sex Somewhere. I say state counties, we're in small order cases, and uh, the, uh, uh, the statistics may not be quite as good as all the cases. Something interesting is that uh, there's a similar over representation, that's not the age, but the same kind of thing. Women with schizophrenia also out there, you know, women with schizophrenia. The uh, number of missions into consideration. Again, not much change in 1980. I'm moving fast. Because if you take, by the way, the six on affective out of the schizophrenia category, you do make a difference. Male female ratio difference uh, there too. That is, uh, part of the discrepancy is more women being diagnosed with affective disorder. <clears throat> uh, are more white, are white more likely to be seen to it? Yes. By a large margin, even if you go for admissions, this is the percent of admissions who are not white, not only in the two years of non whites. ACTs and non whites uh, is under, way underrepresented. <clears throat> age groups, the ages of the people. Uh, getting ECT in 1975. Uh, this is the percent of all ECT. We can see the most ECT in the middle age category here. In 1980, the little, little more, little, little older group. Um, you see, this is all hospital tied together. Uh, red is 75, uh, blue is uh, black is 80. You can see that the Older age groups tend to be going up. That's not what's really happening. What's really happening is this is 75 and red and 80. What's really happening is that the uh, 
ECT rhythms of each age group went way down, except in the older group, and that didn't change. Of course, we don't have one of those previous ones. Um, that. Okay, one piece of literature I want to mention quickly is the ADA survey. And I want to mention it because it uh, has a number in it that's, uh, that's higher than ours. It has about 88,000, ours has about 58,000. One thing that happened in the ACMDA is that uh, they assumed that the non-respondents, the ECT, the people not didn't respond to their uh, survey, use the ECT in the same amount, the same percentage as the respondents. If you make the opposite assumption that the people didn't respond to the ECT, uh, really looks pretty similar. This is APA, tall, tall part of APA on the quarter. And have reported 88,000. If you recalculate it, it assumes that people that didn't respond to the ECT looks pretty similar. The truth is probably similar to the ECT. Okay. I will summarize my mail points and we'll just say that the future questions I would ask in terms of process of clinical epidemiology is. Some more data, some data about what's happened to the data. What is ECT being used for? We don't really have a good idea of that. We don't know about our primary diagnosis, but we need to know more about all diagnoses. We'd like to know more about severity and disability of patients receiving it. We'd like to know about their symptom picture. And we'd like to know how to avoid side effects of the treatment. And we'd like to know about the combination of the treatment drugs. Thank <laughs> you. 